some time because it's narrow. At Abu Jarab, we have a crystal altar, a round disk in the middle of four, a symbol of Hotib. And the word Hotib means peace and food. This uh, round disk, it's a, a lid on a shaft about 180 feet deep to the level of the uh, ocean. And that is still running water in there and you can feel it while you in the area. These instruments were not found in a line like you see today, the nine of them, but they found around the area. And there is still some more to be found. And then we have all this obelisk located in Egypt. Next to that altar, what's left of the, what you call hieroglyph writing, that's a Sufi writing. It has the obelisk and the disk of the sun and words saying, the heart of the sun, Ibra. Arriving at Abu Siya, we can imagine the ancient priests and priestesses who trained as high-level initiates here. Just as we have monks, nuns, and priests nowadays, the ancients trained initiates in ritual practices that served the highest good of mankind. Well, here we are at Abu Siya, and it's very obvious you can see the old riverbed. You can see the pyramids of Saqqara and the pyramids of Giza from here. But more importantly, you can see the old causeway and you can imagine that boats used to come along the river and then the high-level initiates would just step off the boat and walk up the grand causeway and through the pillars into the temple, which is in front of the main pyramid. Spiritual connections would nourish the initiates, instilling a sense of peace and purpose. These elegant columns are carved from solid granite. There's something about these black floors that you just imagine them being polished and the beauty in here. Similarly, you can see a beautiful black floor in the temple to the east of the Great Pyramid. The rituals of ancient Egyptians were dictated by the stars. For example, the ancients tracked the movement of the most prominent star in the night sky, Sirius. Through watching night after night, season after season, they realized that this star would drop below the horizon and remain out of sight for 70 days each year. Its return was awaited with anticipation because it coincided with the flooding of the Nile. Now what happens during those 70 days, well, if you observe the sky, you will notice that the sun reaches a certain point in its apparent cycle along the zodiac. It's somewhere above Orion at the beginning of the 70 days. And it drifts approximately a degree every day towards the constellation of Leo. So the 70 days are bracketed by Leo at a point somewhere above Orion. That point is where the Pleiades are. In the sky it's very clear. I mean, we know what happens in the 70 days. Now assuming on the ground that the three stars are represented by the three pyramids of Giza and that the temple of Heliopolis represents the constellation of Leo, Then, you have another feature. You have the Nile that separates them both. Similarly in the sky. The sun 
at the beginning of these 70 days is about to cross the Milky Way and head towards Leo. So if you take the three stars of Orion's belt and it's being the three pyramids, then you have a scale. You know, you know the distance and therefore you know the stellar scale that you're talking about. And if you use that scale, you work on the same scale, then the position of the of Abu Sir fits the Pleiades. And surprisingly, there are five, six pyramids there, and there are six or seven stars there, and they seem to be in a cluster. And indeed, the sun's path is just below the Pleiades. It's not through them, it's just below them. And Oddly enough, we find the Sun Temple just below the Abu Sir pyramid. So we've got Sun Temple to Sun Temple. I now call it Sun Stations. It looks like these were the stations that on the ground the Solar King performed these 70 days rituals. A bit like the Stations of the Cross. Uh, so you can see them in, in a much, much more archaic and grandiose way. The King went along to these stations, if you like, to perform his rituals, his passion. Here we are at Saqqara. This is the famous Sea Pyramid of Joza. Joza is a, a title to the king of the Third Dynasty, 2900 BC, roughly said the books. The, the Sea Pyramid is the, located in a big uh, courtyard, much, much older than the pyramid itself. And you can compare yourself with the same eye. You look at the pyramid and you look at the wall, you can see the difference. These chunks of stone in front of Hakim are quartz crystal characteristic of the area. If we go back to the ceiling here, then it reflects the crystal tile on the ground. This is what's left of it. This has been quarried by the natives in the area in the 17th century. We see the remains of a quartz floor at Giza, in the temple to the east of the second pyramid. Now I'm pointing the jet pillar, which is symbolizing one of the ancient gods, Osiris. And jet is the word we still use to address the older people, like grandmother and grandfather, jet. It goes back to the story of Osiris, and uh, his brother Seth, the bad guy, who put Osiris in a coffin, threw him in the ocean. The ocean took him place beneath here, Lebanon today. And there is the cedar tree grows, and the roots of the cedar tree captured this coffin. Till it has been found by his beloved sister Isis. She cried. Our tears touch his body and they live together again for a short while, short enough to make a baby with the name of Horus. The story of Isis, Osiris and Horus is fundamental to Egyptian cosmology. Isis is connected to the star Sirius and Osiris is connected to the constellation of Orion. Horus is their prodigal son. 
I'm going to take you now to see that hospital. The healing with the sound. Stories about ancient healing techniques were passed down from generation to generation by the elders. Hakim explains how sound played a part in diagnosing and healing patients. That line of construction, you see like uh, three chambers. It's what's left of the, the house of the spirit. And it's a, a healing system with a sound. It's a medical investigation table. And the patient have the right to use either side of the stairs. One on the right, one on the left. So he have to follow, or she have to follow her own antenna to climb up there and choose the point where she stands. Because each point is connected to a, a chick chamber. We have to...